Hey Tribe, this is Alex with My House Steel. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're talking with Anne Marie, who is a member of My House Steels and just sold her first deal on the platform. Anne Marie is a fairly new investor. She's just over a year into her investing career. This is her fourth wholesale deal on her first one through My House Steels. And she went about it in a really creative way. So I can't wait to share with you what she did to get paid for this deal. Plus, we'll talk about motivation, mindset, choosing the right strategy for you as a new investor, and something that's really relevant to today's market. There's so much virtual wholesaling going on. Many investors are buying properties, putting them under contract, out of state, sight unseen, and if you're local to that area, there's a great opportunity for you to be able to partner with them. So stick around and find out how Anne Marie did that, plus much, much more. All right, Tribe, I'm here today with Anne Marie, who is a member of My House Deals. Anne Marie, thank you for talking to us today. Thank you. It's great to see you. Where are you, where are you from? Hellertown, Pennsylvania. That's Northeast Pennsylvania. Awesome. I love, I love that part of the country. Uh, yes. You just got a deal done on My House Deals. That's what we're talking about today. I'm really excited to learn more about it because I know you were, you were really creative about this. Uh, <laughs> so I want to get into that. But before we, we do that, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your investing background? Uh, yes. I've been investing, um, uh, wholesaling is my strategy right now. Um, so I've been learning about wholesaling and implementing the wholesaling for about a year. I started my business last um, March. This was my fourth deal that I had under contract. I came from being a stay-at-home mom of four and um, volunteering at my church. And, you know, a lot of people probably have that story. Our our finances were just getting extremely tight. Raises were not increasing as the cost of living has been increasing. Actually, raises were going down, bonuses were going down. So being on one income was getting very, very challenging. I didn't wanna be away from my kids. So I actually came across Dean Graziosi's post and his information. And that led me into all the other avenues and researching and, and just kind of down that rabbit hole. And so I've been um, trying to do different trainings that are I, kind of geared towards what I'm interested in, like my niche. So when I got this deal, I actually reached out because I saw that it was a wholesale deal on myhousedeals.com. And I thought, well, let me see if the other wholesaler is willing to JV or if there's enough room there, we could even do a, a purchase option. Um, and that's how... I came across this deal. I've been scanning myhousedeals.com and looking, and um, it's been a little bit challenging for me only because the wholesale deals were the only ones I could really focus on. Now, right now, I actually um, am working with Cam Dunlap's group and the family funding. So now I would be able to pick up some bank-owned or investor-friendly um, properties as long as I have a buyer right and ready so that I can close and then turn around and sell it right to my buyer because I'm not quite at the point yet where I can um, purchase any and keep them. But that is my goal. I definitely want to build a portfolio and um, get to where I can attain some rentals, keep them. So I'm in the beginning stages and I'm just ready to grow. That's fantastic. And just on that, I want to highlight something, which is you really went for it, right? Uh, no experience. You just went after the right people to guide you. Uh, Dean is, of course, a mainstay in that industry. So that's awesome that you found that path. Can you tell me a little bit about how long it took you from the moment you kind of started looking into real estate as a possibility to your first deal? So I, actually, I, I can correct something. Also, I got into the arena a year and a half ago, but a year ago is when I started to get more serious with it because in the first six months, I was 
I was doing some training um, and then it was summertime and all my kids were home. And so there were just constant interruptions. Yeah. But when I started my training, I was so gung ho that I actually made the move. I reached out to us leads lists to get a list of inherited properties. And so within three months I had gotten a property that an owner who had called me and um, I was able to get that property under contract, but I was so new I didn't know, you know, what I was really doing yet. And I was on the phone with a gentleman from the training course and he was, he was walking me through it the best he could with the limited amount of time he was able to give me. It was a wonderful, wonderful gentleman. And I got that property under contract, but I came in a little too high and I was more 80% than um, around 70%. And the buyers in my area, they are looking at 70%. Like some areas mm-hmm. are fine with 80%. Mm-hmm. And the coach had told me that 80% would probably be okay. But my buyers list was very small. So mm-hmm. I didn't have enough people to reach out to at that 80%. And I was just constantly getting feedback that that was too high. That was too high. That property, actually, I, I have not gotten paid from that property. <laughs> yet because our exit my exit strategy changed and I I put my heart and soul into that property and I actually did an estate sale for them it was from an inherited list and I helped them with everything I could but I was struggling with getting a buyer so at one of the walkthroughs an investor friendly realtor had come and she said she felt it would list on the market even as is because Mm -hmm. it was It was really, really, it was nice on the inside and he had worked, but the outside needed the majority of the work. So uh, because I was new, I, I thought it over and another wholesaler had guided me to draw up a consultation contract for all the work I had put in. And the seller wanted to make sure I got paid because he, we had built very good rapport and he, he wanted to continue to work with me, even though I, I recommended that he go with the realtor now because I wanted to get that house done for him, you know? So Um, We drew up the contract a week before the house was to close. He passed away. And so that was, that was really sad because he was wanting to see that house finalized, but he did know that the buyer was in place and it was happening. So at least that, that was some good news. So I'm still really good friends with his um, wife and she was his partner at the time, but his wife now, and there's just some, back and forth with the lawyer right now. And that's why I haven't gotten paid because the lawyer didn't want a realtor to get paid and me to get paid. And I didn't know enough to let them and advise them to kind of step in and say to him, look, this is a consultation contract, not a commission contract Mm -hmm. is what the realtor gets. So I didn't know I was still, my feet were so wet. I didn't know what to do there. So I just kind of let it be. So she, they're going to make, she wants to make good for it. But that was my first one. That was only three months in. And um, let's see. let so me ask I, you something here, because for first deal, that was quite a, quite a complex maneuver that you had to make, which uh, kudos to you for, for being creative and figuring out a way to move the deal and still uh, benefit from, from the transaction. That's what it's all about. Did you feel discouraged after that deal because it didn't go as smoothly as you planned and and you're still working on finalizing it that kept you from kind of hitting the ground running and and, and looking at other deals or or did did it just motivate you to, to go do it even harder? You know, all along I've been on a very tight budget. And so with not getting paid from that and putting so much work into it, it didn't leave me with that feeling of, yes, I'm so ready. You know, um, I just kept chugging along until I got my next property under contract. And that was actually in July. And that one turned out to be an easier one. Um, but that first one was really, that was, that was challenging, but, but yeah, we got, we got to the end point. Um, I do have faith that I will get paid one day. I just don't know (laughs) what it will be. I have a printed check up on my wall that I printed out, you know, that is the the fee. And I look at it every day. So I'm trying to bring the good vibes. (laughs) Yes. And you kept going. You've done deals since then, which is really at the end, the most important thing, right? Because even if you say that was cool, that first deal, I learned a lot that I can apply to future deals. You're doing deals now. So uh, certainly focus on that. Don't let the other one go by. Still uh, keep working on it. But 
I and, think and, the fact that more has happened since then is to your credit. So you focus, you're focusing on wholesaling. Did you choose that strategy primarily so you could build a the funds that you would need to buy rentals or do bigger deals on the rehab side? What was behind your, your thinking on that? So the lowest barrier of entry was ideally, you know, my, my first thought. Yeah. Um, but I like it. I do like the wholesaling and I want to continue wholesaling, but I want to grow from it also, not just stay only in wholesaling. Sure. But yeah, it was to build capital and then be able to branch out from there. Eventually, my husband will get into it with me um, once um, my business grows a bit more. And he's looking at wanting to do a flip in August. Uh-huh. Um, we'll probably tap into some um, private money there and do a flip there. So that'll be new, although he's done a lot of construction in the past, but that'll be new that we'll do it from beginning to end. So that's fantastic. So now we've come to this deal uh, that you found through my house deals. Uh, Was this deal number three or was there one in between the the July deal and this one? This is this was deal number four. Awesome. 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 (laughs) <laughs> uh, so you got to deal number four. What was your strategy? You mentioned that you have been looking at my house deals for a while. A lot of what you were seeing were wholesale deals. So they were already under contract by a wholesaler. Did you start it looking at them? Did you start looking at them thinking maybe this is going to be my first flip? Or did you know at that point that you're going to have to be creative and maybe think outside of the box to make a deal happen? Walk us through that process. You know, I think I was, I saw the deal and it looked attractive. I, the house to me, even though it needed a lot of work on the outside, I thought this could be a really great house. It was a, uh, a duplex and I figured, let me reach out and see if it's available. And then I'll, I'll talk to the, the contract holder and see what's going on. It said wholesale deal, but I figured I'm not sure. I'll talk to whoever it is and then we can go from there. And so when they contacted me back we did, we discussed that and, and they were very open to wanting to JV. Um, I think because maybe it wasn't moving um, and also they are from out of state. So I was local, I could be the boots on the ground and I brought the buyer in. So then I could help finish out the deal. And, you know, we had a nice even JV uh, deal going on there. I just wanted to recap that for everyone watching. You were looking through our listings. You found a deal, a duplex. Uh, it, it, was it in your in your area? The, the... It's an hour from me, okay. but it was in, it was still close enough that. Yeah. Uh, so you found the duplex. You you liked it. It wasn't moving. After talking to the seller, you realize, hey, there's a potential here that we can JV. So instead of approaching the seller to buy the property, which is what he had intended, I'm sure, when uh, he got a property under contract, you then went with an offer to JV and uh, co-wholesale with him to try to move the property faster. Is that right? Yes. I love the creativity on that. Uh, is, was this your first JV deal? It was, yeah. <laughs> and what made you think about that? What made you think, huh, maybe there's room for both of us here? Yeah. Well, that it was a wholesaler who had it under contract. Yeah. So it seemed like they were open to it. A lot of times when another wholesaler is open to it, either they are lacking something, you know, buyers or, you know, so the other wholesaler can bring that to the table. Yeah. And with them being out of, out of state. So the numbers were a little bit off only because they hadn't seen the inside. So when I actually went and saw the inside, I saw the amount of work it needed. And this one turned out to be very challenging. Also, only because um, it ended up being on a potential flood zone. So investors were just turning away as soon as they would kind of click on and or get the information. Mm -hmm. Um, The rehab was pretty high, higher than what it initially was thought to be. He was charging very minimal rent. So that to buyers looked like something was wrong. And the area wasn't the best area. So... Mm -hmm. It really needed, I I actually had to talk to the buyer, or I'm sorry, the seller a lot. Once I was getting the feedback from the buyers and and my buyers that I was putting it out to, I was seeing that 
these things were all playing a part in why it wasn't moving. And so um, I explained it to him. I showed him. I told him what the investors were coming back at. And he came down and the wholesaler and I also came down on our fee because it wouldn't have been fair for us to stay at the fee we were at, which at that time was 10,000. We were going to split that to 5,000 each. And initially the property was under contract for 50,000. So we were going to put it out to the buyers at, at 60,000. Uh-huh. Well, the numbers they were coming in at were like the high thirties and and this is a duplex. So, you know, that's a, that's a low number for a duplex. So it was like, well, what's going on here? Something's obviously, you know, obviously making them come in lower. So I talked to one of my investors that I'm really close with. And he told me, and he said, here's the highest I'd give. And, and it was like, maybe, you know, low forties. So I had to go back to the seller and relay that to him. And he was open and he, um, it took him a little bit to see it, but when he did, Then I also explained to him that because of those things, I felt we really needed to, if he wanted to move this, that we needed to make it like a steal price and not just a deal. And he got that. He's like, I get it. I said, because they're just turning away as soon as they see that it's a flood zone. And then also they would need to get flood insurance. So that ups their cost. So he saw all that. And then um, we got a buyer and finished out the deal. Awesome. So uh, something I want to highlight here, which is, what you're describing is a true dialogue, right? You are being very transparent with the seller, which is so important when it comes to wholesaling. And sometimes you don't talk about this enough. That works to your favor because you're building a a relationship that's based on trust. You have to as a wholesaler because people are very attached to their houses. It's their property. Many times it's the biggest asset they own. So they have to be able to trust you to enter into a transaction with you. And because you were transparent and forthcoming with information, I, I think you wouldn't perhaps wouldn't be able to negotiate that down had you kept him blind to what was happening on the buyer's side, right? No, yeah, that it wouldn't have seemed fair at all for him if, right. if it wasn't explained to him. That's yeah. right. So it was really a true partnership here. Uh, not just with the other wholesaler, but with uh, with the owner. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, can you walk us through the numbers a little bit? You said, what was the ARV at? For the 120, 120,000. 120, 120. Uh, you guys ended up uh, assigning for how much? We brought the buyer in at 36,000. Okay. And the seller got 31,000. Okay. So, so our assignment- 5,000. Yes. So, and at that point, we were just happy to get it done. So <laughs> we really were. <laughs> and that's sometimes that's the deal, right? Yeah. You yep. get it done and then you clear your table to move on to the next. Yes, definitely. Uh, do you have an idea of what the, the repair estimate on that was? Yes, 35 to 40,000. Okay. So we're really looking at about a. 75, 80,000 total investment from the buyer. Yes. And then uh, you mentioned it's a duplex. Uh, one of the units was rented. Both of them were. Both of them. Uh, do you know what the rent, uh, what they were collecting on rent? 400 and 410. So only a total of 810. And um, I imagine the buyer will uh, look to increase that cash flow. Yes. Um, and do you know what they plan to rent it at? I don't, but the average for that area is seven twenty-five for one. Okay. Yeah, so there's was... some definitely some some margin there. Yes. Uh, do you know if any of the tenants stayed in place uh, after the transaction was completed? They both did. Nice. So there is um, immediate cash flow that there won't be a, a, a lapse, which as a buyer, you're always looking for. It just gives you a lot more options and flexibility to uh, play with the property. Fantastic. Now, the big question, how much time did it take you to, once you enter the the picture, to find a buyer? Um, So we went under JV contract February 18th, and we closed April 16th. And um, the buyer, it was, let me see. Four weeks. So about March 16th is when um, I got the buyer. So a month. About, about a, month. a month. Yeah. 
Now, when you spotted that deal and you approached the, the wholesaler um, with the offer to, to JV, did you already have a buyer in mind? Did you, were, do you feel confident that you can, could sell that property or, or was it really a, a risk that you took to say, okay, I'm going to do this. And then once, once we're, we're JV, I'll figure out how I'm going to get a buyer in place. Here. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have a buyer in mind. Um, I have a buyer's list. My buyer's list, the majority are looking in my area. So a lot of them didn't want that area. Plus it wasn't the best area. Sure. So I put it on Craigslist. Um, I put it on my Facebook pages and Facebook marketplace. I was getting tons of inquiries from Facebook marketplace. But then when I would send them the link to the property report that I put together and the pictures, it would just drop off. So I was so busy every day because I was getting inundated with these uh, responses, but then nothing, nobody would stick with it um, until we, we really figured the numbers out better. But, and I also had purchased, not purchased, I'm sorry, I have a program where I can pull up a buyer's list and then I can skip trace it. So I did that also and I reached out to buyers on this buyer's list in that area. And I did get one person who responded and came out and looked at it, but they, they weren't interested. Gotcha. And, and so at, at the end of the day, where did the buyer come from? Which of these efforts? Facebook marketplace. Yeah. And it was actually that I had done three um, trips there to do walkthroughs. And there was a challenge there also because the seller didn't want to have walkthroughs mm -hmm. because he didn't want to inconvenience, inconvenience his tenants, but it was necessary. So we had to, we had to talk to him about that also and help him see each one was like pulling a tooth though. And we had to you know, know that we had to set up the next walkthrough because we didn't get any bites, but also he saw from that, that he wasn't getting bites. And that it was going to be necessary. So he really just had to warm up to to the communication, you know, and, and helping him understand what was going on and why it wasn't moving yet. And the gentleman who ended up being our buyer, he responded to my Facebook marketplace just as I was leaving the house that day. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to be at the house in an hour. And he came and I didn't even think he was interested. And he was the one who responded back that afternoon and said he put in an offer. And I had one other woman who I had some people interested at a low price, even lower than, you know, what we were at. Yeah. But um, So I actually did have a little bit of a bidding war between this gentleman and one other woman who had come out, but it was only going up by like a thousand. <laughs> so, um, and I just went back to the seller and I let him know and then, um, you know, the one backed out and said the other guy can, the other one can take it. And, and we went with him. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, well, congratulations on this deal. Uh, I'm so excited that you were able to, to use the resources that we provide on the platform to be unconventional about it and make a deal happen, even if it wasn't the deal you originally started looking for. I think that so much of this business is about adaptability and just being able to spot the opportunity. And that's really what you did here. So I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Tell us about what's next for you. Are you currently working in your deals? What types of things are, are you looking for? And what are some of your goals out of real estate going forward now that you've, I feel like you're, you're gaining a lot of experience fast. So <laughs> I think with each transaction, it gets a little bit easier. Yeah, it definitely does. And each one has been a really, really big learning experience. Um, so I'm, I'm always on myhousedeals.com. Unfortunately, my, my market area doesn't have much that comes up on there. Um, it's more Philadelphia. And, and sometimes one will pop up here and over here. Um, and I am going to open up virtually. I, I had a deal under contract in North Dakota from a Facebook ad um, that one was a few days away from closing and the gentleman, we found out there were some issues with the gentleman and the law and nobody wanted to touch that house. And um, so the, the buyers kept kind of dropping off there also. And I had a, I had another person who was working with me who reached out to the seller. So we ended up JVing. We didn't complete it because of the issue, but um, they reached out to him and he, 
uh, let me know so that we could work together so that it wasn't like, you know, one of us not, or me getting kicked out of the deal, you know, um, which wouldn't have happened anyway, because I was under contract. It was just that she got, she came in at a really low price and he, he accepted it because he saw that it wasn't moving. That was another really challenging one too, because the area was in North Dakota and the population was not that high and the main plant was closing down in two years. So this area was, you know, very, very challenging. Yeah. Um, but I think the thing that really killed it was his issue, his issue with the, with his, with the law. And then yeah. not going. So you're, you're moving on to the next one. Yeah. Uh, when, and you mentioned earlier, your husband, uh, the plan is for him to join you. You guys want to get into flips. You also mentioned that you want to, uh, start building a portfolio and, and, and holding some of these properties. Uh, do you have a, a timeline for this or a plan for how you're going to be able to scale the sizes and the volume of your transactions? I don't have a particular plan yet, but I do have my children who I want to bring into it also. My oldest is 19 and she's a photographer. So she's going to start helping me with some pictures my um my next one down my son he's 16 and he actually helped me get my second property under contract because he texted out my vacant list um nice. he, he put all those texts out and i paid them so i definitely want to bring them into it because the entrepreneurship is the way to go you know and absolutely even my next one down keeps complaining about school saying mom they don't even teach us you know how to to really get how to work for ourselves. They teach us how to be slaves. And I'm like, you know, you're kind of right there. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll teach you. So. That's fantastic. I love that you're turning this into the family business. And, Definitely. you know, as a parent, it is so important to lead by example. And that's exactly what you're doing here. So uh, I'm so thrilled for you. Uh, you're off to an amazing start. And uh, I, I can't wait to hear back with uh, uh, new updates about more <laughs> deals that you found, more people you're JVing with on the platform. That's incredible. So I want to thank you for meeting with me today, for sharing your story with our tribe and wish you the, the best and the most success in uh, all your future transactions. And uh, whenever your, your, your kids are, are running uh, uh, operations of their own. I'd love to see them on my house deals. Okay, definitely. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Best of luck and, and uh, great talking to you. You too. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you.